oh, it looks like there's a new order for an IV on Mrs. Patient. Let me check her history. The patient's condition and medical history should be considered when choosing an IV site. Conditions that may affect choices include if the patient has had a mastectomy, a recent surgical site, or the presence of contractures or paralysis in an extremity. And I better check why we need this IV. Types and duration of prescribed therapy include maintenance IV fluids, antibiotics and medication, and blood. Let me gather my supplies. And I need to check the expiration dates as well. I want to make sure I'm prepared before I go into the room. Supplies to be gathered include non-sterile gloves, an IV start kit that consists of the tourniquet, tape, gauze, cleansing solution, and a transparent dressing. If your agency doesn't have packaged IV start kits, you will need to gather these separately. Appropriate sized and colored angiocaths. You may want to take two with you in case your first IV stick is not successful. Angios are numbered based on diameter. The higher the number, the smaller the diameter. They are also color-coded based on size. Most often, a 20-gauge angiocath is chosen if the patient is receiving maintenance fluids or antibiotics and medication. If the patient is going to receive blood or go to surgery, an 18-gauge angiocath is required. Saline flush 3 to 10 milliliters, extension tubing, and saline lock. Supplies may vary slightly at your agency. Remember to check all expiration dates. All right, Mrs. Patient, here I come. Come in. Hi, Mrs. Patient. I'm Tracy. I'm going to be your nurse today. Can I check your ID band? Sure. And can you tell me your name and date of birth? I'm a patient, 525-76. Great. The doctor's ordered an IV on you, so are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay, I'm going to look up in your left hand. Usually I like to put an IV in the non-dominant hand. That way it's a little bit easier when you're eating or drinking. Okay. I know this is a silly question, but what's an IV for? Well, you can get an IV for maintenance IV fluids, antibiotics, medications, or blood. In your case, you're getting it for maintenance IV fluids. That makes sense. He did say I was dehydrated. All right. Let me go ahead and get my supplies together and wash my hands. I'll be right back to start the IV. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Open all of the materials, maintaining a septic technique. Having a garbage can close by will help decrease clutter. You will then need to connect your pieces. Remember to avoid touching the ends. Next, flush the saline lock and extension tubing. This will ensure the tube is patent and prevent air bolus to the patient. You will need to flush all ports on your tubing. Next, prepare your angiocath. You will need to release the catheter from the needle now to aid in insertion. This is done by a slight twist of the catheter. This is also a good time to reassure your patient. The nurse needs to consider the patient's age, body size, condition, and level of physical activity, and condition, size, and location of veins when choosing a vein for the IV. Ideally, select the most distal, largest, and appropriate vein first to accommodate the infusion. This is especially important if the patient will be receiving IV therapy long term. Apply the tourniquet approximately 4 to 6 inches above the desired site. The tourniquet needs to be tied in a single hand release loop, similar to how you tie a patient's restraint. Avoid joints and wounds when applying the tourniquet. The tourniquet will cause the veins to dilate and make them palpable. They should feel squishy, like a fishing worm. Put on the non-sterile gloves, making sure they are latex-free if needed. Once you are gloved, activate your cleaning solution. Often this is done by squeezing or cracking the container. 
cleanse the site in the direction of the vein and dry as needed. Have the angiocath bevel up at a 10 to 15 degree angle as you insert the needle into the skin. As you advance the needle, you will see a blood flashback to confirm you are in the vein. Separate the angiocath and the needle. Apply pressure at the insertion site to minimize bleeding and release the tourniquet using a one hand quick release. Apply the saline lock by twisting the saline lock onto the angio. You can place a piece of gauze underneath to catch any blood. Then flush with saline. While flushing, observe the site for any redness or swelling. Watch the patient for any signs of pain and ask them if it feels okay. Remind them that it may feel cold but should not hurt. If there is no swelling or pain, secure the angiocath with a transparent dressing. Once the angio is secure, you can fill out the date and time sticker. Remember to do this before affixing it to the dressing. When applying the sticker, place it so the insertion site can be seen and assessed. Secure with tape as needed. Thank you, you did a great job. Thanks, it didn't hurt at all. All right, I'm gonna clean up my supplies, get rid of my sharps, wash my hands, and document. I'll be right back with your fluids. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome.